Alias the Series review. I don't have a copy. Following an unforeseen tragedy, Sydney Bristow has to reevaluate the organization she's working for. She thought it was the CIA, but in actuality, it's a rival spy organization. For years, she's been working for the bad guys. She contacts the actual CIA and gets an arrangement. She'll be a double agent. Are you confused yet? It's only going to get more confusing. Alias is basically a action thriller spy show. A lot of gadgets, a fair bit of action, and it's usually well choreographed. A lot of shooting, even more physical fighting, and occasional car chases and such. Not a lot of car chases, but what there is of it is really, really good. Before I go any further, maybe I should address some of the common complaints made about this show. A lot of people seem to compare it to La Femme Nikita, the show at least, and I don't really see how that necessarily rids this show of all its worth just because it is similar to another show that Anyway, as far as I can tell, that show does not at all go for the whole mythology as this does. Instead, it's more grounded in reality. I mean, this, there aren't suits and technically not superpowers, but it really is kind of comic book in style. Maybe not so much in style, but in content. It's, you know, it's not complete realism. Some other complaints go on how Sid doesn't use a gun all that often. She doesn't really need to. And just because you might want someone caught doesn't mean you necessarily want them shot. And the rest of the complaints I'm really not going to address at all because they're basically about, ooh, Jennifer Garner looks mannish. Okay, then don't watch her. In any event, there are several guest stars, including, you know, A-list actors, or at least former sometimes. All five seasons have something different to them and have a specific story arc to the season without really losing sight of the overall story. And the show does have an ending. It's not going to satisfy everyone, but it does have an ending at least. The quality of production, it tends to be really, really good. I mean, it was made on a budget, but usually you can't tell. The people who made it were very, very dedicated, and they really did rather well in hiding just how little, you know, they had to work with. In the fifth season, it does go down a bit, but it's still watchable. There isn't really a single season of this that isn't overall at least watchable and usually good, sometimes even great. The first couple, maybe the first two seasons, really, really great. In addition to Sidney Bristow, portrayed by Jennifer Garner, who basically has two modes of acting. 
herself, which is just, you know, cutesy. Yeah. And Sydney Bristow. Yeah. But, you know, she does well enough at that. Her crying could use a little help, but in addition to her, we have her father, Jack Bristow. I swear the guy's gonna kill me. I don't remember his name at the moment, but he is an excellent actor, and he does fantastic in this. Both of them do a lot of compartmentalizing. They really show very little outwardly, but you can tell something's burning inside them. You know, they, they have a lot of hurt in there. But they can't let it out because they're spies, and every day they have to lie to countless people, so that is really well done. There is the boss of the SD6, the rival spy organization, who's kind of devious and, you know, he's, he's good at tricking people. We have the arguably adorable Marshall who is like the show's Q. He's the one with the gadgets and he's just so socially awkward and funny. Yeah, not everyone's gonna love him, but he's not in it enough that it should bother you. He's, you know, on the main cast, but he's he doesn't have that much screen time except for certain occasions. There is the black guy who's working with Sid. He is a great actor and he unfortunately doesn't really get to show it here, but he does get some really good moments. And that more or less covers. Well, there's Vaughn, the the contact in the CIA, you know, Sid's handler, that's it, who gives her the missions. The score is excellent. Michael Giacchino does some of his best work here. You may also know him from Lost and everything else that J.J. Abrams has done. As I mentioned, there is a bit of a mythology. Without going into too much detail, there are some fantasy elements in this, some mystical objects that they uncover. And no, it does not all completely tie together and make perfect sense. J.J. has this habit of starting something and then you know, making it bigger and bigger and suddenly it's too big that he can tie it together and by then he's moved on to the next show. Anyway, if you like spy action and, you know, good drama, don't get me wrong, it doesn't quite go to Felicity territory, in case you watched Mission Impossible 3, which really was more Felicity than... It was like half Felicity, half Alias. Think of the good parts of that movie if you haven't watched any Alias. One more thing that's really worth pointing out is I believe every single episode has a new look for Sid, basically. She's at least one, you know, undercover identity. And they do great work. They... I mean, I'm not even into clothes, but much less, you know, hair and makeup, but they really did great work on that. 
so yeah, if you're into spy action, martial arts, good drama, and mythology, you should definitely at least give Alias a chance.